welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I must confess up front today, I'm feeling a bit poorly. Um, and this is all Mark's fault. Um, we went out to dinner last night um, because it was my birthday this week. Uh, and we had, well, I had uh, rather too much to drink. And as a result, uh, the dastardly Mark has achieved, I think, his objective. And uh, I'm feeling slightly hungover. Um, and for that, it might affect it might affect my solving who knows it might make it better you never know but that well, anyway the, the good thing the good thing is that today we're going to be trying regions in the fog by oddly even and why is this a good thing well you can see it it actually combines probably my favorite innovation in the rule sets of sudoku of recent times which is the region sum line with my favorite innovation full stop which is this fog of war mechanic and the fog of war mechanic means that um, we have to try and work out the digits that go into the fog or near the fog and by placing correct digits uh, close to the fog we will the fog will clear and we will reveal more of the puzzle this does open this puzzle up to cheating because what you could do is just type in all the digits one to nine in for example this cell eventually you'll hit the right one and that will clear the fog from the entire uh, surrounding area. That is not what you're meant to do with fog of war puzzles. You're meant to use the information normally in the white squares um, to figure things out and then steadily logically solve the puzzle. Don't cheat. It's bad. Um, anyway, anyway, actually, I want to I want to go back to last night um, and the meal out because I wanted to show you that um, we practice what we preach here on Cracking the Cryptic. So this was my birthday, uh, my birthday cake uh, from Mark, which is absolutely splendid in two ways. Uh, one of which you can see that this is a chocolate cake that has an enormous amount of icing, which is totally correct. The correct ratio, of course, of icing to cake in any cake is one to one. And this one looks like it's got that right. But also um, <laughs> a smooth ninny. <laughs> I mean, only yeah, only crossword fans, I think, would uh, would have this iced on top of uh, their friend's cake. A smooth ninny is an anagram of my name, Simon Anthony. So that is that's very cool. Uh, I had not, I was not aware of that anagram previously, and trust Mark to find it. So for, uh, henceforth, uh, please refer to me as a smooth ninny uh, in all correspondence. Um, now, actually, speaking of correspondence, I'm going to share something else with you because um, Mark uh, and I haven't got together physically for for a while. And Mark was able to bring with him a present um, that one of our viewers, Boo Boo, sent to me. Look at this. This is a picture of of the first crossword puzzle, Arthur Wynne's uh, crossword puzzle, which is a puzzle I'm very familiar with. I've solved in the past and, you know, it is for crossword solvers an absolutely, yeah, well, obviously a quintessential moment. But this, um, this picture has in the corners and in the centre, I think these are one cent pieces from the year that this was published. Now this year is 1913. It's over a hundred years old. So Boo Boo, thank you so much for this. I am absolutely thrilled. This is going straight up. Well, I would I would put it in, you know, in the hall at home, but I suspect I will have to put it in my office um, uh, for reasons of family u unity. Um, but yeah, I am, I am made up with that. that. That really is a beautiful present. So thank you very much to Boo Boo for sending that that to me um now what else do we need to talk about we should talk about some birthdays before i read you the rules of the puzzle shouldn't we let me i have got a couple of birthdays today emre it's your birthday over there in the netherlands um and i know this because your girlfriend nina wrote to us uh and nina also asked me to apologize to you emre um for not believing him uh when emre told her that ctc videos were the business well, they are the business, and Nina now has, uh, has given her certification to that fact as well. So Emre and Nina, thank you very much for your kind words, and Emre, have a brilliant birthday today. Um, now, over in France, uh, John, it's your birthday, and I know this because your fiance Kirsty, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout-out. And another Kirsty, um, the wife of Nick, 
who's turned 44 today, wrote to us and said that Nick would appreciate a shout out. Um, and that shout out, Nick, is from Kirsty and Rosie the dog. And I'm assured also that you will be getting chocolate cake today. Your only question, my friend, is, is it as good as this chocolate cake? And does it have an anagram of the t on the top of your name, which is sort of, um, you know, uh, an appropriate anagram? All of these things, need, these, you know, these things need to be achieved. Uh, anyway, that's that's all that. The only other thing to mention is, of course, we've got the Planet Suite, which is our um, a Sudoku hunt for our patrons over on Patreon as the monthly reward. We have been loving receiving your facts, which have accompanied the um, uh, your well many of the correct entries we've we've received. And today's fact comes courtesy of Melanie Reed over there in Washington. And this is an absolute banger. So um, basically, Melanie says that one of her favorite astrological phenomenons is tidal locking with synchronous rotation. Now, I had no clue what that was, uh, but Melanie explains that satellite bodies like planets around a star can become tidally locked with synchronous rotation, meaning that the same side of the orbiting body is always facing towards the object it rotates around. So this is where we get the term dark side of the moon from, because the moon is tidally locked with Earth, meaning the same side of the moon is always facing us. And this astrological ph phenomenon, uh, Melanie goes on to say, was so interesting to me that when I completed an undergraduate course in poetry writing, I used it as a metaphor in one of my poems, and I thought I would be daring enough to share those few lines with you. And I think this is really lovely. So it's just a short poem. I will read it to you. I think I know what it must be like to be a tidally locked planet, to slide into synchronous rotation, always facing the beloved star, to have no greater purpose than the privilege of this perfect orbit, to do away at last with night, to bathe oneself in molten light. Isn't that lovely? I think that's lovely. Um, so Melanie, thank you very much for that. We got a fact and a poem. I mean, people who skip the introductions to these videos do not know what they're missing. Anyway, let me read the rules of, of Regions in the Fog by Oddly Even. Uh, they're, they're fairly standard if you're familiar with region sum lines. If you're not, then I will explain how they work. So normal Sudoku rule applies. We've got to put the numbers one to nine in each row, in each column, and in each three by three box, just once each. Uh, lines are region sum lines. Hello, Maverick. Maverick flying past the window. Um, <laughs> the sum of the digits on a line within a three by three box must be the same for each three by three box that line passes through. If a line passes through a three by three box more than once, each time uh, it passes through counts separately. Okay, lines do not branch or cross. So let's um, let's try and work out what this means. Um, how should I do this? I will try and use the pen tool, I think. Can I draw a line in the fog? Um, let's draw Let's draw that line. I don't know if that's a possible line. I'm just staring at it to see whether or not it's instantly broken for some reason. I don't think it is. So let's imagine that this line was in the puzzle. What would that be telling us? How would we interpret this line? Well, in this three by three box, the red line occupies those two cells. In this three by three box, the red line occupies those three cells. In this three by three box, it occupies those two and in this box it occupies that one. And what the rules are saying is that the two yellow squares, the sum of the two yellow squares is the same as the sum of the two green squares, is the same as the sum of the two purple squares, is the same as whatever we put in the red square. So this is, we have to make sure that the totals on the line are equal within each three by three box the line passes through. Now, let's just extend this slightly um, because it also said that if you, if you re-enter a box. Let's say we did that. And we there you can see we've re-entered box three. So we enter it once and leave it and then we re-enter it again. So what that's doing is it's saying that those three squ squares also have to add up to the same as the two purples, have to add up to the same as the three greens, have to add up to the same as the two yellows. What you don't do is that. 
so each time you go into a box the sort of counter resets you don't have to say all five of those cells add up to the three of those greens that's not how to interpret the rules correctly so and then we've got fog of war which i've already explained so hopefully fog of war is clear do have a go these puzzles are wonderful i think this one has two or three stars out of five on logic masters germany so hopefully not monstrous and my uh, alcohol soaked brain will be able to handle it let's see the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking um now what i think i'm going to do first is to actually let's go to the line tool because i can plot what this line looks like a bit can't we we can oh by the way if you're if you're wondering how i'm drawing these lines just click the cog icon on the on on the right hand side of your grids and enable the pen tool you can see up there and our programmer sven has made it so that we can we can draw lines in the grid whoopsie uh, where you could if if you had better mouse skills than i do there we go and that one's going off there so we get this sort of shuriken shape in the middle um and okay so what are we being told here we're being told that those two squares yeah so this line goes into this square so that's interesting already so in a way okay we can see that those totals that that's a single cell in box six and a single cell in box eight so whatever's in those two cells must be the same number because it must correspond to the sum of these two cells the sum of these two cells the sum of these two cells what colors are we going to go with here Let's go with orange and that that's got to be green as well. That one, this one's different because this one might go off on a journey. We can't see what's happening to this one because there's no line segment going up from row four, column five vertically to create a perfect shuriken. Um, so we know those two squares. Let's make those red. So we've got a very pretty pattern here. And I suspect we can do something with the secret. Um, yes, we can. Right. OK, so do you know the secret of Sudoku? If you don't, don't worry. I'm going to tell it to you. Just don't tell anybody else. It is a secret and it's something we tell only our favorite people. But if you're watching this video still, you're still here after 12 and a half minutes of gibbering from me. You're definitely in the coterie of my favorite people. And the secret is that any complete row, any complete column and any complete box of a Sudoku by the rules of Sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each and therefore sums to 45 because that's the triangular number for nine. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine is 45. Now, how do we apply that usefully in this box? Well, what we can say is that we know that each domino sums to a single digit number because it sums to the green to the green number, whatever the green number is. So we can't, for example, make yellow add up to 12 because that would imply we have to write 12 into the green cells. So the maximum we can make yellow, purple, orange or red add up to individually is nine. Now, what would happen if yellow added up to less than nine? Let's say that yellow, purple, orange and red add up to eight. Well, that would imply that those eight cells add up to four times eight, which is 32. But we know the whole box adds up to 45. So what would we have to put in the central square? A 13. What can we not put in the central square? A 13. It is not a valid Sudoku number. So we have to actually increase these dominoes to be as big as we can. Now, if we make them all nine, we get four lots of nine, which is 36. And that's going to, well, rather irritatingly, it's going to give us a nine in the middle of the puzzle. But that nine is not close enough to any of the fog to clear it. Um, OK, but all right. But of course, we're also going to get nine in all of those. Oh, this is going to be magic. This is going to be pure magic, because when I put nine in all these squares, so much fog is going to clear, I think. <laughs> Look at that. Um, wow okay what do we do now we've got what looks like a very long line at the bottom yeah okay what we should do we should try and plot what's going on shouldn't we let's try and work out where these lines are are going ah no there there can't see what's happening to this one 
that one's going down there, that one's going down there. Oh, now look, ah, my my eyes, I can see, can you see that? That's a blue blue line poking out in the corner, the sort of southeast corner of this cell has a tiny bit of line in it. So I think, I don't know if we're allowed to use that, but it does look like we, we've got that sort of thing going on, doesn't it? Uh, that one goes up there. Ah, hang on, that's interesting. That's not going in the right direction. Okay, so what I'm what I'm worried about now is that this line, which is going off here, I suppose it can just dip down. Yeah, it 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 hasn't entered another three by three box. Now the whole concept of a region sum line is equalizing the values of the line in different three by three boxes. So this one heading off to the northeast is quite surprising, but it could just turn down or it could make its way across the top. So we probably don't have to worry about that yet. Um, it really is doing the rounds today. Now, okay, there's a few things I can see here then. I think both of those cells are potentially interesting. Why do I pick those cells? Well, let's look at this one first. This is on this very long line at the bottom, and you can see that those three digits are all in the same box and indeed the same row of the Sudoku. So what's the minimum sum of those three cells? Well, if we put one, two, and three into them, we'd get six. And that means this square is at least equal to six. Now, it can't be nine, so it's six, seven, or eight. And that means if we come back to this, there must be a one in that string of digits. Because if there was no one, then the minimum they could sum to would be two, three, and four. And two, three, and four add up to nine. We can't put nine here. So there is a one there. By the same logic, there's a one there. By Sudoku logic, outrageous, oddly, even making me do a Sudoku in your puzzle. Uh, a mere six minutes into the solve. Um, okay. Now, that's, I think that's got exactly the same profile, hasn't it? Because one of those digits... Well, if we add those three digits up, they're going to reach six again. If we now say, okay, this can't be a nine, there has to be a one in one of those three cells. Um, Okie dokie, what do we do now? Hang on, let me just think about this. There must be something. What's... Do we, uh, we can, no, we can't see whether this is extending or not. I'm just wondering if that one can go there. I think it probably can. We can make three different digits add up to nine, obviously. So, right, what is it going to be then? I am not sure yet. Um, no, 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 come on, Simon, use your brain what little is left of it today um we could argue about i don't know i've not got anything at the moment i'm sort of starting to wonder about you know where this digit goes in this box because you, what you can't do is repeat a digit you know this cell couldn't obviously go on its own line or you'd have to accompany it with two zeros, which is not going to work. Or maybe there's, maybe there's something. Oh, I had another idea, hang on. Yeah, okay, I've got it. Well, I've got something. Um, yeah, it's clever. It's there. Yeah, it's clever. I've got to. Yeah, really like it. Okay, it's not. It's not a trick we haven't seen before in different contexts. But it, I'm going to use it now. Okay, so I'm actually going to look at those cells as a collection. Those five digits there. Now, what's the absolute minimum that those could be? Well, they could be one, two, three, four, and five, which sum to fifteen, and they're accounting for two line segments, aren't they, on this blue line? So they have to have the same total. So they can't actually be 15, because if these cells added up to 15, then each line segment individually would have to sum to seven and a half. I can't write seven and a half in there. So this has to be bigger than seven and a half, and yet can't be nine. So that, I think, is eight. 
and that was correct. And that means, because this is two lots of eight, therefore, these five cells add up to 16, which means they are one, two, three, four, and six, because that's the only way you can make five different digits in Sudoku add up to six. Um, these don't include one. They don't include four, because you can't include double four on them. In fact, look, this is forced to be two, six now. That's the only way that will work. So these squares don't include two or six, and they are one, three, and four, and one, three, and four do add up to eight. So look, we've actually got somewhere. This is now not eight, so this is six or seven, which means there's now a two, definitely, on these li this line here. Oh, hang on, oh. Right, suddenly I've just realized this is going off down here. Okay, I haven't haven't fully th thought through yet whether this can extend to be two cells or more in this box but we do now know that these digits are either a one two three triple adding to six or a one two four triple adding to seven one of those things is true we also know if we look at row if we look at row eight we've not put in five seven and eight look row eight row seven simon learn to count um hmm. okay right so what's going on here well i tell you one thing this cannot be it cannot be an eight because if it was an eight it would be bigger than that digit fairly clearly so this is five or seven now if it's seven that's seven as well and that would be seven and that would be mighty if it's five Oh, that's it. Right, this is it. Right. How could this be five? Well, that would require this line to extend because five is not equal to six or seven. These knowledge bombs we're sprinkling around today. Um, but then we'd have to extend this line and we'd have to have a one or a two as the next digit because we can't go up higher than seven. We can't have two and we can't have one. It's not close enough. So this is seven and it's the same as this. And that's going to do, look, we can write seven into all those three again. Now that police or the ambulance are coming. Um, right, these squares now don't include seven. So they, right, these squares do include five now. So what's, how does this triple add up to eight? And the answer is with one, three, four, creating roping in the final three rows of the grid. What is roping, I hear some of you say? Well, roping is the, exactly this situation, look, where those three digits there are mimicked in a different row in another box. Now, when this happens, uh, let's actually get rid of that blue highlighting. I'll just make those blue. A peculiar thing happens from a Sudoku perspective, because now you can see that these blue digits are, by Sudoku, going to be those blue digits. So these have to be one, three, and four. But the, the party doesn't stop there. Because now we can ask things like, where do those three digits go in this box? And you can see, because they can't go there and they are not blue, two, six, seven have to go there. And therefore, whoopsie, two, six, seven have to go there. So you get this, this chaining effect. So five, eight, nine, that's got to be five, eight, nine. That's got to be five, eight, nine. And these ropes repeat within each three by three box and sometimes it can be useful to color them but um, I'm probably not going to color them here let's, let's actually get rid of blue so we can see the, the fog that's remaining um, seven is not one two three it's one two four so we've got more digits that we've just learned about in box six we've not put three five and six in I've got lots of pencil marks. This is very, uh, very unlike me. Um, and, ah, okay, so this line up here has been revealed a bit, hasn't it? We can start drawing that in. Right. Oh, yeah, we can just do this line. Okay, so now let's do a count of the number of cells on this top line in box three. One, two, three, four, five. The triangular number for five is 15. So the minimum Sudoku digits I could put into the, into, onto that line in box three will sum to 15. 
well how do I make that add up to at least 15 if I can't use 9? The only way is with 7 and 8, and look, actually that's going to be the 7, that's going to be the 8. These are therefore 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These squares are now, oh, hang on, shank. Uh, these 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. These squares are 6, 8 and 9 by Sudoku. Uh, that's not 8, so 8, 8, 8 is in one of three positions in box 1, 7 is in one of three positions in box 1, more outrageous Sudoku we're having to do. This purple domino, which sums to 9, is now not 2, 7 or 1, 8, so that's either 3, 6 or 4, 5. Um, hmm, don't, think we, don't think we can do that. Let me just stare for a second or two, I'm sure. There's something more we can do. We just have to figure out what it is. Ah. Okay, this this line has, has emerged from the fog. That adds up to nine. Ah, okay. There are three ways of making three different digits add up to nine in Sudoku. 234, 135, 126. Um... I share, that, I share that knowledge with you and in the hope that my brain was going to explain to me which of those was was going to be relevant and my brain my brain has let itself down again ah what's going on now um i do not know what's going on with this line at the bottom uh you see this line is very difficult because it could it could extend I mean the most it can extend in box 9 is it could take that cell or that cell so we're adding a maximum of 7 if it does that so the maximum value of the line is 16 yeah okay but we could do that we well hmm no, okay, the lines don't cross, do they? So it probably doesn't add up to 16 then. Oh, look, Sudoku. Let's do some Sudoku. That's going to help us. That's a... Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that didn't... That was... Well, it was useful, actually. But it... This line is much, much simpler than I thought it was. Yeah, I mean, it's hugely simplified now. This has got to be... How do we make this work? This has got to be 5 plus one of those numbers. Well, it's got to therefore be 5 plus 1 equals 6. So we get we get those for free. This 6 knocks 3, 6 out of this. So this is now 4, 5, which means in this column we've not put 1, 2, and 3 in. Now that means this square, which is adding up to 9, is 6, 7, or 8. Five, one, oh, one. One in this box is useful. One's got to go there. So that gives us a two, four pair. That's useful. That means the two in box nine's got to go there. We get two and six for the price of the price of that two. Um, five is not here. So five is in one of those two. So five is not there. One is not there either. One is not here. Okay, so one... Oh, hang on, 2 and 4 are not here either, so there's all sorts going on now. 3 and 5 have become a pair in this top box, so we can reduce everything down. 2, 2 is just placed, sorry, I didn't see that. 2 is just placed in the top box. We got some fog as a result of that. We get one 4 pair here, putting 3 down here. 4, I've not been looking for 3s in corners. This 3 is a very irritating one from that perspective. In fact... We've got one chance left for a three, and it's there. Because neither of these can be threes by Sudoku, and apparently this one can't either. That's a six by Sudoku, so we get a three-five pair in column nine. That's therefore not five. That's not five. We've got an eight-nine pair. Oh, I see. So in column eight, you can see everything's come down to pairs. We've got an eight-nine pair, a three-five pair, and a two-four pair. Ah, bobbins. Right, okay. Um, what about... 
how do we resolve all this up here? We could say that What's okay? We might have to think about this. Oh, I always forget, find it a little bit worrying when the lines just disappear into the fog. We know, okay, we know this line adds up to eight. What we don't know is how long it is. Now, could it be? Oh, I don't know actually. Um, as far as I can see, it could be very many things. <laughs> it could be two cells long, or it could easily be three cells long, and it could then go up there. All right, okay, so we've got to take stock here. Look, we can take six out of these squares. Two seven is then, all right, okay, maybe that's something. This red line now, is not four five and it's not two seven. If it was two seven, it would break that square. So that is either three six or one eight. Now, ah, aha, that's not. So this is now one six here. This square here. Now that might do something. No, or it might not. Eight. Oh, eight in the middle box is quite restricted now by this eight. So eight's only got two positions, which means one in the middle box, which must accompany the eight to add up to nine, is in one of two positions. And that means one is down here. Ah, now if one, it, right, if one is on the line, that doesn't prevent it from being a three cell. It makes it more likely to be a three cell uh, line. If, hmm, if one was on the line, it was a two cell arrow, that wouldn't work because that can't be a seven. So if this is a two cell arrow, we've got to put the one here. And then it could be two, six or three, five. it could be three, five. That three, five only sees one cell on this arrow. Ah, I think there's something there though. Let me just mull this for a moment. If it's two cells, it cannot be one, seven. No, it's actually, it's the wrong way, isn't it? it? It works. If it's three cells, you need the one on it and the one can go on it. If it's two cells, you push the one off it and then it can be either of the other two options. So that isn't how to solve this. That's not nine. It's probably Sudoku. That's probably what we're missing. Um, and I'm sorry to gather you all into that we pronoun. <laughs> um, uh, Hmm. What's going on? They've got to be okay. I'm just wondering if that's of any use to us. Hmm. Let me just mull. Sorry, I'm. I'm sure there's there's a simple way of doing this. I'm just not seeing that. I'm seeing lots of weird things like a three cell. A line that sums to nine must include two low digits by which I mean two of the digits one two and three because if you think of the options we've got two three four well that's got two and three one three five that's got one and three and one two six has got one and two so those four cells contain all of the low digits right so that digit is on this line which is sort of strange I mean, is that, I wonder if that's actually worth, I'm going to, uh, how do I, you, that's nearly awesome. Uh, I don't, right, all, all I'm thinking there is that because I know that that digit is in those four cells, it, it can't be that one, can it? So that, this digit is in one of those cells. Let's just make let's make that not yellow. So we're, t we're thinking about this low digit here. And that low digit then is in one of those two cells. Now. Ah. I've done it. That's it. That is absolutely beautiful. That is beautiful. And that is that is a sting in sting in the middle. That's a sting in the middle, oddly even. Because that 
I'm fairly sure, certain I'm missing something very simple, actually, because this puzzle so far has not involved that that level of. I mean, it's go It's a gorgeous deduction, to be honest, and I'm very pleased to have found it. But but it it feels harder than anything I've had to do so far. But so so what I've noticed is, um, can that be yellow? That's the question we have to ask. Can that be yellow? Now, if that's yellow, we know that the, it must be a two. And what does that make that digit? Well, those two add up to nine, so that's going to be a seven. But if that's a two, that's a seven as well. So you get two sevens in this column. And that tells us this cannot be yellow because we know yellow is the low digit. So now yellow is one or three. And if yellow is one or three, it's the pair there which means this square in the column is a two, uh, which doesn't actually, well, what it does is it fixes this line because this line is now not two, three, four, or one, two, six. So that's one, three, five. And that does give us a digit. It gives us an eight down there. That did clear fog, I think. When I, yeah, here we go. We're, we're clearing more fog again. In fact, that digit's now a four. Um, so we can get rid of some more thingies. That, oh, okay, look at this cell. Well, that, this is a two-digit total at least, so it can't add up to two. So that's got to be a seven, um, which can't have a seven on its line because that wouldn't work in the world. And this square is big enough. Look, that has to be a two-five pair to add up to seven. It's the only way you can make those digits small enough is to minimize them both. So we're going to get five here, two here, eight here by Sudoku, nine in the corner, two here this is not oh oh look where does the eight go in the middle box now it's got to go in in that one so eight one three one three uh this square is six by the power of addition this is two seven which we can do it's that's that is absolutely beautiful um i'm just i'm just suspicious that it, it, it seemed complicated compared to everything that had come before it. I really hope that you have to do that step to solve this puzzle, because that would make, in my view, this puzzle just more magical. Now, look, those two digits have to add up to the same, they have to be the same thing, and they can't be six or nine, so that's double four. Um, get rid of those. Uh, but, uh, okay, that's not four. We still don't quite know what's going on on this line, do we? There's another line there. Oh, that line's got to get out of its box at some point. Right, so where are we? Can we take stock? Yes, look, there's more Sudoku to do. Two, four, four, five, five, three. Now, those two squares are a one, six pair, although we don't know the order. Um, okay, but if that's, oh, that works. I was going to say if that's six, that would have to be a two cell line and that would have to be a two. And if that's one, it would have to be a three cell line and it would have to be one, two, five. And well, okay, where would you do that? That doesn't work. Okay, so I think now we know enough to, to make more progress down here. I think... I'm just wondering if they're again whether I'm overcomplicating things. What are those squares? They're seven and eight. Yeah, so where does seven go in this column? It's got to go there and we can clear some more fog. Yeah, so so let me come back to this, because I think I think it's just reasonable. I mean if this is one, we can't just write seven in here because of this seven. So this must therefore be a three cell sequence within this box that sums to eight, which means because it can't use the four, it has to be one, two, five. But there's just no way. Um, oh, no, there is. Oh, no, whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm totally misleading you because this could, well, no, this could, there's no line here. Yeah, the, the, po the point is where does the five go? Once you force this to be a two, you could make this a two or a five, but you can't make it both. So this has to be six. That has to be one, and it was a two there. Okay, there's another line that's just emerging. That's a six, that's a seven. 
that's a 7, that's an 8. That line's now not 3, 4. Does it have to have... Yeah, look, and it has to have 2 on it. So it's, that's got to be 2, 5, and we can do the order. We've nearly finished all of the fog. This is not 1. These squares are 3 and 5, which we can do. That's 5, that's 3. This, uh, Mark calls these a chocolate tree pot, teapot triple because you know you, you reduce them down to two options each but you still don't know the order um, okay that five is doing some work that puts a five here and a three here that makes this a one look we've only got one fog cell left this is a five at the top of the grid this is a three three ah oh, nearly no, it is, it is, because that can't be three. Look, do Sudoku on this box and ask where the three goes. And the three goes in the corner as the last fog cell. And that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. And that clears up the chocolate teapot at the bottom. So all of that gets filled in. We get to put one in the grid here. We get to put eight in the grid here. Uh, this square is not the most difficult digit in the world now, although it took me a while to scan it. That's 6, so that's 9, that's 8, that's 6. This is 1, this is 4, this is 6, this is 9. 9 in this box goes there, and we've not put 4 in the box. And we've not put 8 and 9 in that box, and that might be how to solve the puzzle. That's fantastic, isn't it? 31 minutes of pure and utter pleasure. Um and oddly even take a bow and I love that and I am intrigued about that, that middle step and whether there was a um, a different way of seeing that that was simpler I really hope there wasn't not because I have schadenfreude but just because I thought that was beautiful I thought it was an absolutely beautiful idea uh, and to me it would make the puzzle even more perfect um, if we had to avail ourselves of those angels of our better nature. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.